G'day everyone and welcome back to NS2HD. I'm here to bring you a matchup between Keed Way Threadyad, that's right, I'm trying to pronounce their full name, and team number 156. They're currently messing around in the ready room preparing to begin this game. This is a classic matchup in the beta, Keed and, no, and team number 156. They have met many times on the field of battle and I'm looking forward to seeing them going at each other again. They're always great fun to watch when they fight. Keed is a very creative team and uh, team, team 156 is a very strong play team so Keed uh, I found often tries to do some crazy stuff and team 156 tries to play the game uh, in a very technically strong way and so it's great to see those two play styles mixing up and I believe we're about 60 seconds out from start now both teams discussing their tactics so I will introduce both teams we have Keed, me, Wildman, Smog, uh, Cheetopia, Fish, and Keed with Grethildalon. I, I, I'm terrible at Welsh. I can't do Welsh. So Keed's going to have to give me a lesson on Welsh at some point. And uh, Team 156 has Scotty, uh, Persian Immortal, Scotty Bob, Noah, Wasabi One, and McGlaspy. And them saying we're ready and uh, just letting me know so I can start my cast, but I have already started it, so that's all good. And I imagine both teams are going to line up to join up now. I think this will be a best of three or a or a three game matchup. See who can uh, who can win the most out of those three games. And here we go. I think both teams are joining up right now. So I am going to head over to spectator, waiting for it, waiting for it any second now. Both teams probably on their own chats on uh, TeamSpeak or uh, Mumble or something like that right now. That's why we can't hear them chatting. But rest assured, they are both chatting away. I'm going to go ahead and join up the spectator team and try and get over into the map. Here we go in the map now. I'm going to start on the alien side just because I normally start on the marine side. This is a single perspective commentary. Uh, just to make sure I can get these games out to you very quickly. When I do them dual perspective, they do take about five times longer to do, no joke. And there's the countdown. We are, I think we're live. I think both teams have started and we're off. We have 156 on the alien side and Keyed on the marine side. I'm going to fly straight up into data core because that is usually where the action goes down early in the game. On in a summit matchup, and this is of course a summit matchup. We have four skulks coming up to data core, and we have two marines in ventilation. Note that I don't have uh, Fiha's minimap mod installed in this matchup, so I will occasionally just bring up the minimap like this while I'm chilling to let you know what is going on on the map. So two marines holding flight control, two marines holding ventilation, one alien on the power in data core and it looks like the marines are going to be content to hold these two extractors they're not going to push for data core yet and uh, Keed is going to just sit back and get that res flowing and it's always good to have those three extractors very early on like Keed has done it gives you a lot of tech options and it looks like 156 is just holding they're waiting to ambush Keed if they try to press towards data core and here we go we're in combat the first big fight of the game and it looks like 156 has definitely won that by a strong margin and now they're going to be able to go at the extractor so uh, if you're trying to take a lesson out of that moment it was probably that Keeve got a little bit aggressive there they probably should have recognized that the aliens were going to be there they were going to be guarding data core and it was uh, highly unlikely that they wouldn't and they've been punished for that they've lost their extractor and now they're in a difficult position because at this stage you either want to be holding data core or you want to be holding the ventilation extractor and unfortunately Keed has neither a couple of skulks going down but not enough uh, to press this back and Keed is doing the, the, the thing they need to do right now they are pushing forward as a group to retake ventilation hopefully before the power goes down there goes Persian Immortal and who else? no, someone else is going to escape the power is being repaired and I wouldn't be surprised to see that extractor quickly dropped. There it is, another a, an extractor, a replacement extractor going down to get Keyed back into this game. And let's go and see one Marine, who's that? Uh, Chiltopia doing a great job there, just holding position and preparing for the Skulks. And as soon as that Skulk came around, they were in a position to take that down. Let's check for a Hive. No Hive in Data Core. I am very surprised. Let's fly through the map, check out Crossroads. No hive in crossroads. Let's go over to heliport. No hive in heliport, so very surprising. I will fly down and check out the alien tech at some point, but I am surprised to see no hive from 156. 
Keed has an observatory, it is unbuilt. They have no arms lab at the moment, one unbuilt infantry portal, one active, and one active armory. So probably because their team pressed out towards, we're now pressing into data core very aggressively, that's why their structures aren't built. Commander no doubt preparing to drop med packs, and there's a big loss. Persian Immortal goes down as a lurk. He managed to deploy a bit of gas there, which held up that Marine push a bit, but no doubt those Marines ran up here and thought, what the hell is going on? Because there's no hive there. And uh, they, they're going to pull back and retreat because there's no hive for them to kill. And they're probably going to reassess and, whoa, we've got a bit of an animation glitch happening there with Keyed Me. Uh, moving back into the base, and they're probably going to set up the structures that they needed to set up. So there goes that observatory going up, and no doubt the infantry portal as well. And I'm going to fly down to the alien side of the map and see what they are doing, see what is going on flying through the map. Excuse me, I will do this in single perspective commentaries. We have harvesters in crevice and in uh, reactor core. We have a whip that's standard, probably from the melee one early on, but no other tech. No other tech. I am, I'll admit it, I am a very confused commentator right now. No crag or shade. Very, very surprising to see no hive, no crag, no shade. There's a crossroads hive. Very odd that that was so delayed. I'm very surprised. Very different play from 156. I don't know what they're doing. I definitely won't discount it, this, discount it at this point. 156 is a very, very good team. And whatever they're doing, it's a plan. Looks like some combat over in uh, heliport and flight control. Let's check out the hive being constructed in crossroads. No tech drop. Oh, 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 oh. This is what they're up to. Here's what they're up to. I knew I shouldn't have discounted 156. They have dropped a shade in a sneaky spot, no doubt with the help of a gorge, and they've dropped a cloaked hive. This means the marine team cannot see this hive, and that hive is probably going to go up stealth, and uh, the marines aren't going to know, and there are going to be fades on the field before they know it. So that is some amazingly good play from 156. Normally I would have expected such creative cloak play from Keed, but it is 156 that's pulling it. I'm going to fly over to Heliport. Looks like there is combat trying uh, as the marines try to take the, the extractor in there and maybe set up a second base with some phase gates with that observatory tech that they were going for earlier. So there's the extractor going up. The Crossroads Hive now has three Hydras, so it is well defended. There's one Marine scouting in there. He's probably thinking, why are there aliens in Crossroads? What are they doing? But uh, he won't be able to see that Hive because it was cloaked. Two Marines holding data core and a little bit of combat over here in summit reception down towards crevice that harvester is vulnerable but i don't think we'll see marines going in there instead taking some time to kill some cysts and there's noah flying through as a lurk dropping great gas in uh, in summit reception and causing those marines to choke a little bit there's the shade but the hive high visible interesting i'm not sure why maybe someone's uh said over the chat that they think there's a hive there and uh, then uh, fired just at the hive itself and decloaked it by shooting it. Another, oh, another, uh, excuse me, another lurk going down. That's a big blow to 156. They've had two lurks go down now. So Keed is definitely still in it, but this cloaking tactic is serving them very well. But here we go. Keed love their grenade launchers, and they are now doing exactly what they need to do. They are firing grenades from this passageway here. This is a great position for Marines because it's, although it's enclosed and gives great ambush opportunities for Skulks, this doorway is lockable and it leads straight to Marine Star. And so it's a great position to flog a crossroads hive from. And I think that's what's key. That's what Keed is gonna try and do. There's the scan. They are gonna be able to see everything in here. Now you can see the cloak particle effects disappearing, uh, but uh, it's still gonna be tough to destroy this hive because there are three hydras up. And uh, while this is a great position, it's not a perfect position. You can shoot the hive from here though. That gorge trying to press those Marines back. Let's check for combat elsewhere. Two reinforcing marines coming up from marine start. Three marines, some of them with grenade launchers now, in crossroads, ready to take uh, take on this hive. Skulks doing what they need to do, which is get into the thick of it and try and mess this up. Those reinforcing marines coming in at just the right moment. We've got a mix of shotguns and grenade launchers. Shotguns great at covering grenade launcher wielding marines and the grenade launch is great at killing the hives and all the structures around them, which is exactly what these grenades are doing right now. That crag is cloaked and is healing up the hive. All the hydras are dead, and there's the umbra to try and reduce the bullet damage from, uh, 
from the Marine's weapons. There's still a Hydra down there doing damage to this Marine. He's going to approach at close range with his shotgun and try and kill it. Skulk's getting in to try and clean up those Marines. Fish and uh, the name I can't, can't pronounce going down to those Skulks there. They are now... They're not cloaked, sorry. And... Uh, Marines still pushing in from Marine Start. This is definitely where the combat is happening, but check out the minimap. Here's the fade. And there goes Wildman and me. McGlaspie is a very dangerous fade. I fought him in public servers and it's never fun because he just kills me all the time. He's a very good fade player and that is just... Uh, Keed no doubt will have had a morale drop right there because they were thinking, hey, we were attacking the hive. It's come down to 60%. We can keep this up. But... Uh, the, fade, the Hive popped and the Fades are now on the field. There's one Fade coming down, he's coming in to this doorway and those Marines are about to cop it. And though that Fade was cool. What a kill from the Glaspy. What a fantastic kill. He was cloaked and what an ambush. He does go down though. So not all bad for Keed. A great kill from the Glaspy, but the Marines have managed to kill him. That was an amazing kill. He was cloaked, he used the Fade Snipe ability. And uh, I think that's an indication that the fa a lot of people say the Fade Snipe ability is useless, but there you go, McGlaspie just proved that with Cloak, it is a great ability, and it can you can ambush a Marine and kill him in one swipe before he can react. Marines now, though, have been cleaned up in here, and there's nothing else really happening on the rest of the map. Flight Control Extractor has gone down. That's a big thing. Let's go and check out the Marine base and see what kind of tech they are pulling to try and sway, swing this game back in their favor. An arms lab going up, absolutely necessary. They're probably thinking, all right, we've got fades. We need stronger bullets to bring them down. We need heavier bullets. We need to do more damage to those fades. We have an advanced armory. That's what's giving the grenade launches. McGlaspie now, as a skulk, has come in and managed to kill a Marine in the heart of Marine Base. Two infantry portals up. No sentry guns in here. Uh, the observatory, no phase gate. So that's the tech mix that the Marines have to deal with this. And wow, the infantry portal has gone down. Sorry, he's going down. Another infantry portal is going down. Fish comes in to try and save the day. Persian Immortal takes him down. He is now fade. Most of the Marine team is dead. A beacon is now being activated to bring them back into the game and try and recover this. And the aliens just evaporated as soon as that happened. The fade retreated. The skulk went down. And now it is up to the alien team, I think, to finish this off. It would take a, an amazing push. Although, here we go, a robotics factory. So we may be seeing an arc, which could be a method that the Marines could use to bring down that crossroads hive or even alien star. I think combined with a phase gate, it could be really dangerous, but I don't think that Keed will have the resources to get both a phase gate and an arc. So... Whether or not this will be effective, I'm not sure, because an arc requires a lot of teamwork. It requires a marine team to guard it very, very carefully and in numbers, because alone a mark will be an arc will be destroyed very quickly. A Mac being deployed, no doubt, to repair those the infantry portal. Uh, Persian model coming in cloaked, and he's going to kill that Mac, and that's a big loss because that Mac was expensive, and it is going to get chased down and killed. So a big loss there, the Marine team rushing back to Marine Start to try and recover this. And that's a big blow. The, the Keed only has two extractors. Let's take a look at the scoreboard during this fight. And now two fades coming in as well. Wow, this could be the end of the game for Keed right here. A flamethrower being deployed. If that flamethrower can be kept alive, that could be very dangerous. The fade being stripped of all its energy. I am surprised at the amount of tech that uh, Keed has been able to deploy, given they now only have one extractor. They must have had a bit of money saved up. I can't see any other way. The alien team now has five extractors, five harvesters, six harvesters. They have heliport, data core, crossroads, reactor, crevice, and alien start. So they will just be swimming in money, and the entire team will be able to go fade at some point. And that will just decimate Keed's ranks. They need to kill those harvesters. They need to move quickly across the map in a team and kill those harvesters. I don't think they're going to, though. I think they're going to press for this hive. And at any moment, I think Marine Start could be attacked and they could lose the game because they're all out here in uh, crossroads. Marine Start is undefended. A huge fight happening here. Flamers, the grenades, and that fade is in trouble. He's lost his energy. He's going to need to get out of there. He does go down, but a second fade coming in. Two shotguns trying to take down Persian Immortal after killing Noah, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The flames are gone. 
and a marine start is now under attack. The observatory has gone down. There are no beacons coming to save this. It's now going to be just a matter of the marines spawning in one by one because one infantry portal has already gone down. Smorg coming out as commander to try and defend his base. But I think the, you can see the aliens coming up through the map now, and this is it, I think, for the Marine team. Keaty's in real trouble. The aliens are coming towards them. They have precious seconds to get that second infantry, infantry portal alive and try and get more Marines into their base to defend it. They're not going to have enough time, though. The, the aliens are almost here. They are in Marine Start. They have arrived, and that is going to be it. I think there's no sentry gun in here. There is one sentry gun, but it's not positioned to be able to defend the base. It was covering one entrance. There's not enough Marines alive, and I would be very surprised if 156 wasn't able to clean this game up right now, right here. One infantry portal is... Two infantry portals still spinning. I am corrected. But uh, where are all the aliens? There are four aliens in here. A fade going down though, Persian Immortal going down. The, the slight fade nerf in the previous patch in build 185 is giving the Marines, uh, it seems, a little bit uh, more ability to kill. It's, it's allowing them to kill those fades a little bit more often. And hey, I have been proved wrong. Keed is still in this game. Tenacious defense. They're repairing the power node there. It looks like the Skulks were focusing on that. And one by one, Skulk's coming in. That's not going to win them this game. This, they definitely need to be coming in in one big group to try and uh, end this game. Well, Noah going down, as you'd expect, because he came in as a lone Skulk. McGlaspie going down there after killing one Marine. There is a flamethrower in Marine start, and that'll be crucial to any defense and any breakout that the Marines are at. At any breakout, the Marines' attempt will require that flamethrower for sure. And now it looks like they are pushing out, so Keed is not giving up, and I wrote them off earlier in the game, and uh, that was poor commentary by me, because they are not going to be written off. These guys are mean Welshmen, and they are not giving up. They are now going to push on crossroads and try and do some damage. Uh, I would, I think maybe a data core push or a heliport push would be, would be better. Try and knock out the harvesters one at a time, and then push on, on, uh, Crossroads when you know that the fades aren't just going to be able to keep popping out, but I don't think that's going to happen And here comes a fade into the middle of it getting set on fire. No doubt having a lot of damage done There are oh there are multiple aliens in marine start though So I am going to leave that fight and turn to marine start and that is often what happens in these situations There goes the power you get a marine breakout and then that allows the aliens to attack marine start so marine mobility is just not, uh, it's not enough. Check out the flashlight lighting effects. That is really great lighting there. Um, that is what happens. You get Marines breaking out of a tough spot and then the aliens prosecuting them for that. You need the phase gates to maintain mobility and that is it for the first game in this matchup. Stick around guys because matchup two is gonna be coming at you very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. As usual, leave comments to let me know what you like, what you don't like and what you'd like to see in the future. It's been a pleasure to bring this game to you and I'll see you all soon for more NS2HD videos.